Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about the dark side of physical media collecting. And believe it or not, there are a few darker aspects to physical media collecting because it is something that be can become a, quite an addiction if you're not in control of it. And there are things that a lot of YouTubers will not even mention, but it can become a problem for people who do this long term. So stay tuned and you may learn a thing or two about uh, physical media collecting. So thanks for joining me today, guys. As I mentioned, today is the dark side of physical media collecting. And when I say dark side of physical media collecting, I'm talking about the topics that can become quite hard to manage, quite difficult to comprehend if you're not in the community. So the first one I want to start with is you will never have enough. So what do I mean when I say that? There is always going to be something to collect. So one thing with collectors is we might say, okay, we've got every 4K ever made. And then it'll be like, oh, well, I have to find something else to collect. And that's when I started collecting Laserdisc because I found a format that I wasn't too aware of back in the day. And I wanted to experience it. So I went out, bought a four, uh, Laserdisc player, went out, bought about 150 Laserdiscs, and then I enjoyed that for a while. And then now I've got 150 Laserdiscs that kind of I don't know what to do with. <laughs> I experienced the format and I was happy and then I was like, okay, I've experienced it now. That's enough. <laughs> but, you know, there will always be something else to collect. And that's something that physical media collectors will never tell you. They will never tell you, okay, I have enough. That's enough for me. I don't need another one. There is always something else to have in the collection. There is always something else to add, something else to add to the collection, something else to watch, something else to go back and grab that you never experienced. There is always something else. Whether it's a new steel book, an older something, a newer release, like a new 4K, like there is always something to add. And another dark side of physical media collecting is that it is significantly more expensive than streaming. And you might say, oh, but that's a given, like you, you own your movie, you're, buying, you're paying for ownership. But I did a little comparison here. So if this is, these are Australian prices, by the way. So if I wanted to have on Amazon, Without, with, with ads, let's just say with ads, let's go to the baseline for, um, for the subscription. If you just wanted to watch Amazon and you don't mind watching an ad or two, that is $8.99 with ads. If you wanted to watch Binge, that is $18. And Binge is the home for HBO and WWE Network and so many other content in Australia. It's basically what Foxtel was for a while. And it's basically Foxtel in an app now. And it is, it is pretty good. That's probably my favorite one because obviously the WWE Network, I'm wearing a, tri uh, not Tribal Chief, Final Boss shirt. But why did I go to acknowledge him? He's final Boss, yeah, he is the Final Boss, but you know, we acknowledge Roman Reigns on this channel. <laughs> How good will it be when we fin finally do get that match, by the way? But yeah, if I want to watch Binge, that is $18 for a subscription. If I want to watch Netflix with ads, $7.99. And if I want to watch Disney on top of that, that's an extra $13.99. So all up, I could have those four streaming services, Amazon, Binge, Netflix, and Disney, for $48.97. By comparison, I paid about $47 just for The Crow, one of my favorite movies, and I think it's awesome to have in my collection. But you know what I mean? Like, and especially new release movies. So if I was to go out and buy like the new new releases at JB Hi-Fi, they would be about $40, $39 each. So $39.98. So, you know, there are, there are things to be aware of with physical media collecting and it be can become a very costly lesson if you don't want to collect it, if you're just doing it for the wrong reasons. Like me, this is something that I love. I love collecting. I love having a library of movies that aren't online. I've talked in the past about my job and my career and how when I come home from work, I want to switch off. I don't want to necessarily have my phone on at all times. I want to just have all computers off, all this, just have on my TV, have on my Blu-ray player, put in the Blu-ray and switch off from the world. Have no connection to the outside world. That's what I love about this collection. It gives me the, it gives me the uh, ability to switch off for long periods at a time. I can just put in 24 on Blu-ray or whatever, watch a whole series of 24, whole season, and come back online two days later or whatever if I have two days off, you know? It's kind of a right to disconnect in a way. So. There is part of me that's like, I enjoy the experience of having this, but there are people who just collect it and say, 
well, I got to buy Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2 because everyone else has them. And yeah, they're $70, but I'm not too, I'm too big on these movies, but I need to have them because everyone else has them. You're, you're collecting for the wrong reasons if you're doing that. Collect them because you want them in your collection, because you love the movies, because they mean something to you, not because someone else has it in their collection and you're competing. That's not the right reason to collect anything. But another thing you've got to be very aware of, and this is a very dark subject because a lot of physical media collectors will say, oh, but they, they will last forever. Disc rot is real. I've actually seen disc rot on my old DVD collection that obviously I took them out of the covers long ago. I did a video on it recently. I'll put the link in the description. But I, um, I did notice disc rot on one of my discs in that. I did notice that I think it was wired up. I think there was something going on with that disc where you could actually see the early signs of disc rot. Now, obviously, that's been outside of a case. It's been neglected for almost a decade at this point. I taught on my original DVD collection almost a decade ago, not even. But I, um, I could see the signs of that happen. You also see it with Laserdisc. Now, obviously, I haven't seen that occur with a Blu-ray. I think Blu-ray have a lot longer lifespan. But, you know, the fact that it can occur, you need to be aware that your disc collection, no matter how good you look after it, whether it's climate control, whatever, it can still, it can still uh, degrade over time. It can still break down. Every resource, like a disc, can essentially, it has a timed lifespan. It could maybe last 30 years. Like, I've got some releases here from the early 2000s that still look great. Dragon Ball Z looks great, and the discs are holding up very well. You know, they're holding up very well. But, yeah, I think you need to be aware that, um, where did this come from? This came from 112. There we go. Or 212, I should say. But, you know, you need to be aware that your disc collection is not going to last forever. For me, I think this is going to last long enough, and by the time... By the time this ends up all going away and all becoming disc rotted or whatever, I mean, there's still CDs from the early 90s that aren't disc rotted, you know? They're, these things, we're still finding out how long their lifespan is, but as long as you look after it, you'll get the longest time out of it possible, but just be aware that it can, can occur. It's real and it will happen. It will happen with titles in your collection. It will happen without you even knowing you'll go to put in a movie and it might already be rotted. But you just need to be aware of that. And I constantly check my discs in this collection, like ones that I commonly use a lot. I'll constantly go back and just watch, just keep an eye on them, make sure that it's not rearing, make sure it's all maintained, have a look at it. But then, what do you really own when you have a physical media collection? What do you really own? Now, you might say the license. You own, you own that movie. It's in your collection. You own that movie, uh, the license to watch that movie at any time you want. And they can't take it off you. They can't take it off a shelf. But what are you really buying? Like, yes, you're paying a premium to own that movie on physical media. You're, you're paying a premium. As I said, you could have every streaming service on for the same price it costs to buy one a month, you know? So essentially, you have to ask yourself, what is worth it for you? Now, for me, I, as I said, I like to switch off. I like to be away from everything. I like to just, when I'm at home, I like to have no internet on if I can help it. Now, obviously, I do like to watch YouTube. I do... If I have my YouTube on, I'll do it on my phone, but I try to limit how much data I use each month. So I try to limit to uh, about 300 gigs. That's what I get from my phone plan. And I don't have home Wi-Fi, by the way. I have it all on my phone because I'm always working or something. So I always have my phone on me. So I try to have all my data and anything that I would have on the phone. And I don't think the MBN's is great value. So I think 5G is just better. <laughs> but... That's one of the things I like. I like to have it accessible to me at any given time. And while I'm offline, I don't like to have the computers on. I don't like to have all these other bloat stuff on. And you might say, hard drives full of movies. Yes, there are. That's a scenario where people can go online and do what they need to do to get their movies. That's, I can't talk about that. And there's also scenarios where you can rip your collection. Like I know MKV, make MKV. Back a couple of years ago, I tried to at least make use MKV to uh, make the Dragon Boxes, back up the Dragon Boxes, because they're getting up there in age. But there are scenarios where I'm just like, if I'm putting it, if I want to watch a movie, I want the whole experience. I want to have the box in my hand. I want to look at the art. I want to grab it off the shelf and say, yesterday, okay, I have watched this one, but I think I last watched it on Blu-ray. I should probably open that one. That one hasn't been open yet. 
But, you know, I want to grab it and say, okay, look, he's crossing the crossing. It must be something about the Beatles. And then, yeah, it's obviously he, it's the Beatles get erased, but he still remembers all the music. That's the plot of the movie. But this is pretty cool, this movie. I, re I really enjoy this movie. But I can watch that at any second notice. And you might say, oh, but you're paying a premium for that. Of course I'm paying a premium. I try to get these on sale when I can, but for something like that, I would have got that on sale. For something like The Crow, I would have got that on sale. It's very rare where you cannot get these on sale. Like if you wait for the right time, like Father's Day or uh, Boxing Day or what's the other one? Uh, the one that comes after Thanksgiving in America, um, Black, Black Friday, Black Friday sales. If you wait for the stuff, stuff like those to come around, you can get these pretty cheap. And my store of choice is JB Hi-Fi. I go there a lot. They don't sponsor me at all. I don't get anything from those guys. But I wait for their sale to happen. And I think a lot of physical media collectors just wait for a sale. And there are parts of me that is a bit worried, and this is a darker side of physical media collecting, that stores are starting to get out of it. Like JB Hi-Fi have drastically downsized their uh, physical media collections in store. I went to one of my favorite stores, uh, the East Garden store at, in New South Wales. And a lot of people, do you know East Gardens? Do you love the East Garden store? Well, the guy... um. The guy who manages the collection there, he, he was the physical media, he's the guy who oversaw the physical media collection and the physical media section of that uh, store. I asked, I went in there one day and there was no physical media, not even CDs, not even vinyl, nothing. And I went in and asked him, hey, what's happening with all the physical media? He said, oh, well, you know, floor space, you know, the up, upper management have decided the floor space is more valuable than what we're selling Blu-ray. And he was upset almost that they got rid of his physical media section because he was a fan of selling them, you know. That was he, he could curate it, he could put certain movies on the front of them. And that's what we're losing now. Like even JB Hi-Fi are starting to really downsize and that's very scary because part of the buying physical media experience for me is going in store and picking it up. I try not to buy online. I don't like to buy something online unless it's absolutely not an option to go in store and buy it. Because, as I said, I might go in store and say, okay, I want to pick up, I don't know, what's something here? I might go up in store and pick up uh, Top Gun. The original Top Gun wasn't my most favorite movie, so let's get uh, Top Gun Maverick. I go, in store, I go in store and buy Top Gun Maverick. This was an amazing movie, by the way. Amazingly shot. Amazing sequences. But let's say I want to go in store and buy that. And I might go in there and say, oh, I haven't got Hocus Pocus either, so I better grab Hocus Pocus. And, you know, you can go in... And reminisce about old days of going to phys uh, going to the video shop or Blockbuster or for me it was Video Easy. It feels very similar. But there is the darkest side of physical media collecting, and this is the final topic of this video. Is it hoarding or is it collecting? Now, what does that actually mean? Now, people might say you're just hoarding physical media. You're just hoarding it, Jamie. You don't really need that much. And yes, to an extent, there are parts of it where it became a hoard. There are also parts of it where I was like, yes, I really do want all the Dragon Ball Zs, you know? I really do want all, all of as much biopics as I can get, because biopics is one of my favorite genres. I need to collect all the Marvel movies. I need to collect all the DC. But these are stuff that I will watch time and time again over the years. There is a time where I was hoarding for a little bit, and it's not a bad hoard because at the end of the day, I wasn't... I mean, I did spend quite a lot that most people wouldn't be comfortable spending, but I was aware of it and I kept track of every cost. I was keeping myself accountable. And that's why at the end of the day, I'm happy with my collection. I looked at the cost on paper and yes, I did make a cost video on this, uh, on the topic. I'll put that in the description as well, a link to the cost video. And yeah, I did talk about how much the collection costs overall. There's just the Blu-ray portion. I didn't add the DVDs onto there, but just the 4K and Blu-ray portion of my collection. And it was quite shocking how much I paid, but at the end of the day, I was I was kind of relieved that it wasn't as much as I thought it was. I was easily thinking this was $100,000, but it wasn't. It was like probably half that. So it wasn't as much as I thought it was. And yes, you might say that is still a crazy amount of money, but for me, that is something I'm comfortable with. Like it's, yes, it's still a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of money. It's a very lot of money. But I put that together over a course of like four, five, six years. So, you know, it's not something that I just went out one day and said, I'm going to spend all of that on physical media. I kept costs and I added it up over the span of five, six years. That's how much I probably spent. 
So what's that? Probably like maybe 10 grand a year or something, you know? It's not necessarily too bad in terms of what I spend. Of course, 10 grand is still a lot of money for a lot of people. That's like a car repayment, a home loan, you know? That's something I'm aware of. But this is the stuff I'm talking about. If you're not in control of it, you it will be in control of you. You will say, okay, I need to go into JB Hi-Fi and buy every 4K Blu-ray I can possibly get my hands on. And there are times where I will be like in the same mentality. Like the Father Day sale was on recently and I decided not to go to JB Hi-Fi. There are a lot of 4K releases out that I do want to get my hands on. But just for that very reason, I chose not to go to JB Hi-Fi because there are a lot of Blu-rays that I want to get my hands on. And until I know what I actually want when I walk into that store before, I'm not going to walk into that store and buy every 4K Blu-ray. I want to be very aware before I go in, okay, I do want to add this movie to my collection. I do want to add that movie to my collection. Don't really need that one. Don't really need that one. But I will have a list of movies that I want to buy rather than just going in and browsing for that sort of sale because I know what I'll be like. I know I'll want everything. And that's me controlling the way I curate my collection, not necessarily hoarding. And I arrange it in as such. I arrange it into cont into uh, genres. So I have control over the way I collect. And if you don't have control over the way you collect, it can become a problem. If you're spending more than you uh, earn, if you're putting it on credit, if you're doing stuff like that, you need to uh, stop and you need to... Um, reassess you need to reassess where your collection what what means the most to you like nine times out of ten i'll come into this collection and because titanic's my favorite movie i'll pull titanic off the shelf and i'll be like oh well i should watch titanic again <laughs> and i will my my friend will be laughing if she ever watches this video but yeah i've watched titanic every year i will put it on and it'll be like oh it's time to watch titanic and it'll be like i'll do it a couple times a year and i'll put up joke posts like oh First time watching Titanic, what's the movie like, guys? Did the ship sink? And, you know, just little things. There's a bird right outside my window and I can hear him. Or her. Yeah, there we go. But, you know, that's what I'm going to end this video on. If you don't control your physical media, collecting habits, it will control you. And that's something that no one will talk about. They will talk about so much like, oh, it's the best it's ever looked. 4K resolution. But, you know, there is a cost associated with that resolution. There is a cost to get in. It is a lot more expensive than Blu-ray. It is a lot more. Blu-ray and even 4K are even a lot more expensive than DVD at this point. And all of it, I mean, VHS is starting to get a, get a collector market. So VHS is kind of on the rise in terms of cost. Um, but, you know, there is costs associated with this. You need to decide what you're comfortable paying. And I always pay my bills first. So that's how I try to collect. I always try to pay my bills get my food, take care of other expenses, put some money in savings. And then at the end of all of that, then if I can afford Blu-rays, I'll go like, okay, I can afford to buy maybe 200 in a sale or something. I can afford to buy 300 here or whatever. I assess every cost. And you need to do that if you're collecting. You need to be aware of how much you're spending and don't, don't guilt trip yourself. I mean, as I said, I bought the Crow for like $47 on sale. It was originally 64 or something, but I got it on sale. And you need to ask yourself, okay, I want the crow. Do I need the crow? How much am I happy paying $47 for that? Yes, I was very happy. But for you, $47 might be a week of food, you know? You need to be aware of your what you're comfortable with and what you're happy paying. And if you want to watch the crow, there are DVD versions, there are Blu-ray versions out there that you can get your hands on for a lot cheaper. And it might not break the bank and you can still buy your weekly food or whatever because, you know, everything's going up. It's insane, the cost of living in Australia. It's, it's more insane than everywhere else. Like, you, you, we talk about inflation in the world. Australia's inflation is insane. And we have one of the biggest housing bubbles ever created. Like, you look at the 2008 model that was created in America. Australia is the worst I've ever seen. And it means that people like me who do really who do relatively successful in their career and what they earn and their earning potential and whatever, you know, all that stuff that we talk about as corporate, not corporate, I'm not corporate, but like, you know, all that stuff we talk about as being like career workers. And, you know, there are so many career workers who are like, I can't even afford a house. I, I'm like this or that at my career, but I can't even afford a house. Like, it's insane how Australia's housing market is at the moment. And, you know, spending the money on this, like, I know I can turn around and sell Columbia Classics, I don't know if you can see Columbia Classics, but 
I've got my Columbia, Columbia Classics box sets up the top. I know I can probably turn around if I needed to and got desperate. I could probably sell them for a maybe 500 each opened. Like, you know, I'm not, not anything too fancy. I know there's some things in there that might go for even more or even less. But I know I can turn around and sell those for, you know, if I got desperate and I got really to the point where I needed to sell stuff. My laser disc collection, I spent probably 3000 on that. And that's with the player. I know I could turn around if I wanted to flip it tomorrow and get rid of it. I know I could flip it for $1,000, even maybe 1200 you know. And you got to be aware of what its, what its value is when you buy it and what its value is when you try to sell it or when you might need to sell it. It is an asset. Don't get me wrong. It is an asset. It is something that you can sell going forward. And yes, some, some keep their value, some don't. Like one thing that has kept its value overall are the... The level sets for Dragon Ball Z, these have become highly collectible. Now, I think I got these at JB Hi-Fi back in the day for, I think, I don't know, a couple of dollars. If I, just, if I was looking these up online on eBay now, I would assume they go for a lot more because these are gold standard, you know? These are something that people say they're better than the Dragon Boxes. But these are the things you need to be aware of. You need to be aware of what you're spending. You need to be aware of how much control you have over your collection. And you need to be aware of, do you actually need it in your collection or do you want it really badly? Or are you just buying to compete with other people? Are you buying to try to outcompete Jamie here? <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I'm, I don't mind. If you have a bigger collection than me, that's fine. Like if you have a hundred movies in your collection, if you have a hundred DVDs or even if you have a dozen DVDs in your collection, I will get on Facebook often and on my personal account and I'll go through like the communities on there and be like, oh, this is a really cool collection. It's 12 movies, but it means something to you and it, they're the movies that you love. That is what I try to do. I believe every collector has the right to feel like they have achieved something. Not just these big collections like mine or, you know, everyone else's on YouTube. We will collect because we collect. But if you have something that's like, hey, I've got the 12 titles that mean the most to me. And look at this, it's a, I got a special edition of this one or whatever, or I could have like a disc that, this one was pretty cool, but it's got two discs, it's got the special features on that one. I enjoy that much, that stuff as much as the big collections on YouTube. I enjoy seeing people glow when they talk about their collections. I enjoy seeing people get into it and love the collecting. So yeah, the community can get a bit competitive at times, but... Don't be put off. As long as you have control of your finances and you have control of your collecting habits, then it's a healthy habit. But I know that people will say, but you can have a hard drive full of movies if you go to the bay. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, wasn't Metallica suing fans at one point because of that? <laughs> but yeah, we won't talk about Metallica. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> Sorry, Metallica. Love your music. And the Sandman is amazing. Black Album was, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, overall, yeah, we'll move on because I've just ranted for however long. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Like, subscribe, drop a comment. Watch the videos in the description that I've mentioned in this video, um, the cost video, and I think there was another one I mentioned. I will be watching the video back and it'll be down there. But yeah, let me know what you guys think and I will catch you in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye.